Welcome back to Wrestling World. Today we'll be taking a look at Charlotte Flair coming clean about leaving WWE. One WWE superstar who wants to date Stephanie McMahon, and one WWE star's hot take about The Fiend and Randy Orton. Before we get into it, make sure to subscribe with all notifications on and drop a like below. So let's get started with Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair has returned to WWE action after being away from the WWE for over six months. Charlotte was written off of television in June after Nia Jax attacked her. In reality, Charlotte Flair was dealing with a very concerning health situation that couldn't wait anymore. She had to address the situation and take care of herself, put herself and her well-being before the WWE for the first time in her career. That's what she had to do. Charlotte Flair's surgery required her to take six months off and take a break from all physical activity. Charlotte didn't let all those months away from the ring go to waste though. She did complete several projects and TV shows, like appearing on Stone Cold Steve Austin's show that's coming out this year. So she did stay busy during her time away from WWE, but she's finally back with WWE now and opening up about why she left when she did. Charlotte had this to say during a new day of WWE special. It felt like hard times for the company as talent, as individuals, but I was like, I need to go home. If I'm not going to do this now, I'm never going to do it. When I left, I felt so deflated and it's not because I wasn't or didn't feel creative. I just felt like I was at a standstill. I was working NXT, SmackDown and Raw. I felt like I was doing the best work of my career, but I was not moving forward. I felt like, well, am I letting the company down because I'm leaving? I've always been there regardless of how the fans view me as good or bad. So the last six months, I just tried to think about them. When I do return, what does that look like? And what do I want? Because I have done it all. So it seems that not only was her health situation on her mind, it looks like Charlotte was also reflecting on her current situation and position with WWE. It looks like she was already planning out her return and questioning what she would do when she has basically done it all. Well, WWE had the right answer for her and had her return to do something that she's never done before. And that's when the WWE Women's Tag Team Titles. That's a WWE title that Charlotte Flair has never won before. And with her now winning that title, she has become a WWE Grand Slam Champion. So in a way, she got her wish. She came back and accomplished something that she's never done before. She's a tag team champion with Asuka and she's currently in a tag team division. Obviously, if you've been watching WWE for a long time, it's easy to see that sort of direction that WWE could be going here with Charlotte and Asuka. Sure, they seem like best of friends and absolute soulmates right now as tag team champions, but it looks like their tag team title run is only the beginning of a long rivalry and story between Charlotte and Asuka. As soon as something goes wrong or they lose those tag team titles, Everyone expects Charlotte Flair to turn on Asuka and turn her attention back to the Raw Women's title. Charlotte has been a Women's Champion several times now, so you just have to figure that her character is not going to settle with just being a Tag Team Champion. And that could lead us down a road of seeing a remix version of Sasha and Bayley's storyline. In Sasha and Bayley's storyline, the babyface character put an end to the cocky heel's reign. But in this story, it appears that Charlotte would be turning heel to take that title off of the babyface champion. So a complete reverse of the Sasha and Bailey storyline. With Charlotte wanting to come back and do something special that she's never done before, that's probably what we're going to see now with the Asuka storyline. It'll be a long program of them starting off as tag team champions and probably returning to be rivals by the time WrestleMania rolls around. So keep your eyes on Charlotte and Asuka because that storyline could be something big for Raw in the upcoming months. WWE Superstar was interested in dating Stephanie McMahon? It looks like Triple H wasn't the only superstar that had feelings for Stephanie McMahon. Devon Dudley was recently a guest on The Average Bloke Show and was asked what superstar they always wanted to put through a table but never did. Devon Dudley's response to that question was Stephanie McMahon. Devon Dudley also revealed that he was infatuated with Stephanie McMahon and even told Bubba Ray Dudley about how he felt. He said that Bubba Ray did make fun of him for feeling like that about Stephanie McMahon. He also had this to say about Stephanie McMahon. 
I would have loved to have dated Stephanie McMahon. I'm infatuated with Stephanie. I think she's beautiful inside and out, is funny, charismatic. She is everything that I would think that a woman should be if I wasn't, if I wasn't married. So some unusual reveals there by Devon Dudley. Not only did he want to put Stephanie through a table back in the day, but he was falling for her as well. What are your thoughts on what Devon Dudley had to say about Stephanie McMahon? WWE has added some darker content to their programming in recent weeks, with Randy Orton burning The Fiend and then threatening to burn Alexa Bliss as well. Even though this is some sort of content a lot of viewers have been begging for, some individuals think it may be going too far. Some individuals thought the visual representation of Alexa Bliss pouring gasoline all over herself was crossing the line a bit. But former WWE referee Jimmy Cordeas believes that it was Randy Orton burning the fiend that went too far for him. He had this to say when speaking with Wrestling Inc. You could have alluded to the fact. It's like what they did with The Undertaker, for example, when he was put in a coffin before set on fire. You didn't actually see the person on fire. It's a bit different this time. I think that was a little much showing. Regardless of whether that was the fiend lying there or a dummy, the visual was there, and I think it was a little much. So that's Jimmy's view about the situation. He said it wasn't as big of a deal in years past, when you can't actually see the WWE superstar on fire, unlike the Firefly Inferno match, where we actually saw the fiend set on fire. It wasn't like Orton kicked him into a room and then burned the room. He actually burned the fiend himself. So Jimmy feels like it was a bit too much. Do you agree or disagree with what he's saying? Do you think WWE is crossing the line with this Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt storyline? I think I'm going to have to disagree. I loved it. It had everyone talking about WWE. It went viral. And as a result of that big TLC moment, it's become one of WWE's most intriguing storylines. So I don't think I would change a single thing so far. Up to this point, I love the story as is. But of course, things may get questionable and a bit shaky as we get closer and closer to The Fiend's return. I'm a little concerned about the overall direction of the storyline because of WWE's history. WWE has this tendency to create these great, intriguing storylines for a few weeks and then quickly lose direction and flame out towards the end of the story. So I hope that doesn't happen here with The Fiend and Randy Orton's story but we'll be reviewing every segment we get from the storyline and breaking it all down. But what do you think? Did WWE go too far with The Fiend vs. Randy Orton? What are your thoughts on the rest of today's wrestling news with Charlotte and Devon Dudley? Leave your comments, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.